What's up, weirdos? Liam Payne, or as I like to call him, Liam, please, please stop being the most embarrassing person you could possibly be, please. He's been embarrassing himself recently online. It's so bad. Genuinely, it's just Liam Payne every time I'm looking at this guy. If you don't know Liam Payne, he's like one of the former members of One Direction. And whereas Zayn was like, you know, really big with pillow talk and then kind of went more fashion, model like chill Loki. And then Harry Styles, you know, became who Harry Styles is. Then you got Niall and Louie, they're doing their own things. Yeah, they're not maybe as mainstream successful, but they're having really successful solo careers and they're doing great and they're all friends you know with Zayn and Harry and then there's Liam who did strip that down for me after the band broke up and then said this about Harry Styles solo material keep in mind he just made strip that down for me this is who Liam Payne is about Harry Styles he said I'll be honest with you it's not my sort of music it's not something I'd listen to but I think he did a great job of doing what he wanted to that's the way I put it best I think Payne said I think the funny thing is Harry would say the same thing about me because he doesn't really listen to hip-hop music Whereas it's like, my song's more Tiger's Rack City. He said, strip that down for me. It's a little bit more like, Rack City, bitch. Rack, Rack City, bitch. I'm gonna have to mute it. This song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this right here is what he said. Yeah, I don't think Harry would like it. It's a little bit more hip hop. But maybe that's just because the song features Quavo, which Liam, I would say, just because there was a black guy in the studio doesn't make it hip hop. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That is who Liam Payne is. And I cannot emphasize enough, that type of a comment is his entire post One Direction career. The entirety is just Liam Payne speaks and then everybody cringes. And even if you're like a One Direction fan, I think there's so much in this like research that I found that you might not have even known about. Because this is not just a deep dive into like, oh, a little bit of internet drama, we're getting into this boy's soul. But it's not just public embarrassment because his ex-girlfriend posted a series of videos describing his Hor genuinely horrible behavior. And we are definitely gonna get into that. There is so much here. But let's start with the most recent thing that got me as the hook into this story. Liam Payne went to a Niall Horan solo show. That's sweet, that's nice, you know, former band members connecting. But whereas when Harry went to Niall's show, <laughs> this is so funny. When Harry went to Niall's show, you can see him dancing, he's going all out. But as you can see, he's kind of in the dark and it was difficult for fans to get footage of him. Even going to the back in the dark so that he couldn't be, you know, getting any attention towards himself, just letting the moment be about Niall. <laughs> Instead of doing it like that, oh my god, I, this is so funny. Look, okay, look at this video of Liam. There he is, uh, dancing a lot, getting up, oh, looking out at the crowd. Oh, anybody else thinking that it's kind of cool that I'm here? Okay, everybody's got their phones out. Hey, now how about I lean forwards, put my hands in my pockets, really mog on these fans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me sing this song to you. Oh my God, <laughs> how's it going? How's it going? Yeah, it's Liam, Liam Payne. You know, I me mean, from One Direction, let me sing it to you. Yeah, let me perform right here. This moment's all about me, right? Oh my God! That is doing the most to get all of the attention on you in that moment. It's not about you. He also did like a whole meet and greet outside of the hotel in Argentina where this concert is happening for Niall. Like he's going out doing a meet and greet just outside of a hotel just for the attention. It's not like an official thing. It's not like Niall was like, hey, let's do a little thing for the fans. Oh my God. And then going to the concert and doing that. And oh my gosh, there's more videos of this, by the way. No, cause you've also got him going over here, literally just stretching out, taking selfies. He's just, it's like, it's like, why does he think it's all about him? He's waving, waving, waving. Come on, everybody. Come on, gang. Let's get a big group pick. Hey, it's me, Liam Payne. Do you guys remember me from One Direction? It's so embarrassing. It's like genuine pain. Every time I see Liam Payne, it is genuine pain. He was doing so much to get attention that the security of the venue itself literally had to pull him back. And he was like, oh, come on. I want more attention. But if it could not get any worse, preceding this, he did an entire like little vlog on his Snapchat. Oh my God, I cannot emphasize enough how much Harry Styles does not have a Snapchat story where he's vlogging. I cannot tell you, like, <laughs> he is the only former member of One Direction who doesn't act like a former member. He acts like a fan of the former members or like he's still really, really holding on to it. And it's like, weren't you 13? But look at this, oh my God, a Snapchat vlog, fuck. Because Niall Horan's playing down there. And I think we might just go and say, hello. Um, it's been a while since me and Niall have spoken. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, and I would like to square up a couple things with the boy. No bad vibes or anything like that, but just, um, 
we need to talk. Why? Why? Why are you doing this? I can't, like, I, I can't, I, I can't, like, why? We've got a lot to talk about. Why are you teasing personal relationship dynamics to your fandom because you are like grasping on to the fandom. You've gotta like value your own life more than what other people are thinking about you. You just have to. Oh my God, we haven't talked in a while. So I'm talking on our Snapchat story about how we haven't talked in a while, but it's important. Why are you doing these facial expressions? Oh, and it's not just there by the way, because he also did a, a TikTok with his girlfriend. We're gonna talk about his ex-girlfriend in a little bit. Warning, we're going so deep into Liam Payne. Now, this is a video that his girlfriend posted on TikTok. <sighs> Just try to bear with me. Oh my God. So it's her eating sushi, her showing drinks, and then... Mm. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he's not joking and I can't take it. Popping up the collar, looking at the camera like this. Literally full up, just straight on. Why are you being dead ass about that? Like your girlfriend's just making a cute vlog. Oh yeah, we're at Niall's show. And he's going, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Her vlog continues. She's showing Niall. Cuts to him. Oh my God. That's the strongest mog I've ever seen. By the way, keeping that in mind that he was posting on his Snapchat story about reconnecting with Niall because they hadn't spoken in a while and they had a lot to talk about. To his Snapchat story, he then talked to Niall backstage and took a couple pictures with him and reunited. Holding on to his necklace, Niall. <gasps> no, nah, I'm just kidding. Niall, Niall's being good. Niall's being a good friend. And then this picture right here, Niall, smiling, cheery. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Liam Payne. Yeah. Every time I look at Liam, I just wonder, what are we doing? Hey, Cooper from the future, because after I filmed this video, his ex-girlfriend then, in light of all of this like cringe stuff and everybody talking about him, she came out and talked even more. And the stuff that she was sharing goes from embarrassment to like, this guy is back. So I wanna make sure that we watch that and have that context early on in the video. And then later in the video, we're gonna talk about her even more because she wrote a book about him. And it's not a rom-com book, it's a psychological horror. But her name is Maya Henry and she started out her TikTok talking about how he basically is a stalker. Y'all don't even know what happens behind closed doors or in private. Ever since we broke up, he messages me, will blow up my phone, mind you, not only from his phone number, he oh, it's always from different phone numbers too. So I never know where it's gonna come from. He'll create new iCloud accounts to iMessage me. It's always a damn new iCloud account. I'm like, every time I see one pop up my phone, I'm like, here we fucking go again. Also, not only me, but he'll blow up my mom's phone. Is that normal behavior to you? You were in one direction. Liam Payne, Liam Payne. You could be like Louis or Niall. You could be Harry, you could be Zane. Instead, you are making a bunch of different iCloud accounts to harass and stalk your ex-girlfriend. Messaging her mom? Going out of her way, messaging your ex-girlfriend's mom. How does he have so little, like, class? Like, he has, he has, he does not act like he's somebody who was in One Direction. But that's like the first thing she talks about in this. It gets so much worse. And is also messaging my friends. Not only was he messaging them, I found out later, while we were together, so they could go over to his house, apparently. Um, but then is also was messaging my best friend to come over to his house when his girlfriend was gone, was saying, oh, my girlfriend's gone, blah, blah, blah. Might I add, literally said, he has all these people on his damn Snapchat, which he has for years, apparently, that he messages or whatever, um, and on Instagram. And he says that he preys on One Direction fans because they will always be loyal to him and they won't tell on him. Preying on One Direction fans because they'll always support you? Listen, unfortunately, that's true for some people. Like, look at this. Okay, guys, the fandom needs to treat people with kindness more or it will fall apart. Uh, trust me, Harry Styles does not think we should be treating abusive, stalker, freaky exes with a little bit more kindness. If, by the way, you look at any of the interactions between Liam and Harry during One Direction days, it's just shit like this. Like. He's so annoyed with him. Lifting up this man's shirt on stage, doing that, being so annoying. Like this clip right here, this is from an interview where Harry couldn't get a word out because Liam wouldn't shut the fuck up. Look at the look on his face. H Harry does not like this man. Literally posting TikToks in the year 2020, way past the breakup of One Direction, fake FaceTiming Harry Styles because he's the most famous and successful like former 1D member. Man. Hey, hey, how's it going? You good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> someone's got the giggles. Huh? Why are you acting like a fan? You were in the band with this guy. Oh my god, I cannot emphasize enough how much Louis, Niall, and Zayn are not doing shit like this. Okay, sorry, but I'm getting I'm getting off track. But no, I, I, I also have to say this. Like, this Harry Styles post, Liam Payne commenting, lol, that I just realized I have a song called Daylight. <laughs> Dude, shut up, shut up, shut up. Harry didn't like it. Harry didn't reply. Harry didn't acknowledge. We do not need to treat this man with kindness, especially when we get into the rest of these videos. You see the type of man he is. Stealing Zayn's high note. That's, that's who you are. 
The way Zayn looks over there like, what the fuck is he doing now? Cut to Liam. <laughs> Girl, shut up. Okay, but Maya continued. Quite frankly, very disgusting things that have happened and disgusting things that he's done. And he knows that too. He knows that he can get away with anything. He's told me. And oh, don't you dare, don't tell anyone because they're not going to believe you anyways. Like the fans always have our back. We can do whatever you know we want and they're always going to defend us. And he's right. That's the thing is he's not even wrong. And he knows and he uses that. Dude. Dude, dude, they're always gonna defend me. I'm Liam Payne. No, you do not understand. You cannot do anything. You cannot be a horrible person and then skirt any of the backlash because you're Liam Payne. People do not respect Liam Payne. And the ones who do, and I cannot emphasize this enough, the only people who are defending Liam Payne are people who are so parasocial, I'm sorry, so parasocial about One Direction, that they're like, well, th 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 this could impact the reunion. No, 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 we can't. We can't cause any conflict between the boys. The boys can't have any. I cannot tell you enough how much Zayn motherfucking Malik will never be on stage with Liam Payne again. Get it through your fucking skull. The reunion is not happening with Liam Payne. If you want the reunion, get him off. But people who are so parasocial they can't even breathe are like, no, no, no but, but, but Liam, but Liam, but Liam, if we, if we cause a problem, then they won't be able to come back together and sing What Makes You Beautiful. That doesn't mean that you should excuse somebody being a stalker abusive freak. And also so embarrassing and cringe and so annoying to the rest of the bandmates. If you like the boys so much, then you should probably not like the one who's making the other four miserable. By the way, if Liam Payne left One Direction, I don't think Zayn would've. Let's keep going. You're defending someone you don't even know. You literally don't know him. I lived in a house with him for years. I'm pretty sure I can speak on my own experiences and and then y'all tell me, oh, no, 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 he would never do that. Do you hear yourself? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the Liam Payne stands, by the way, an insane sentence. Liam Payne has stands? What it, What world do we live in where that man that we just watched those videos of has stands? This is his, this is his real life ex-girlfriend and her experiences and her stories match up with his public actions and behavior. It's not like everybody else unanimously is like, oh my God, Liam Payne, what a sweetheart, what a wonderful guy to be around. And then there's just one ex-girlfriend. Like then maybe, maybe you could think about something. Everybody's experiences are similar with this man and they are all negative. And our public perception, what we see See of him is just negative. The stuff that we're gonna get into with the rest of this video, I've already filmed it. Trust me, it's so embarrassing and the type of person that you don't ever want to be or be friends with. Let's let her keep going though, because she did write a book about this and she's gonna like not get into it, but we're gonna get into the book later in this video. Uh, she basically just wrote a book about how horrible he is and was there. I mean, I'm not gonna go too much into me talking about the damn book, but oh, that was all fake, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. I'm literally saying no, it's not. But yeah, also, talking shit about your bandmates and then showing up to their concerts, but it's always for your own benefit. It's not even because you actually just want to go support. You want to go stand up there and like take the attention away from everyone. And you're standing there. Really? Because you know everyone's going to be videotaping you. And just like you did at Louis' concert the day my book came out, don't even get me started. That's going to be another story time of what happened before my damn book came out and like the links these people fucking went to. Yeah, and again, you know, we're going to get into that in the rest of the video. But what you need to know right now is that she basically wrote a book about an abusive boyfriend who's a washed up pop star who was a former member of a boy band that was created on a TV show. And she's saying right now, no, 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 that that, that is true. Because I guess when it came out, people were like, well, it's just it's just fictional when clearly, as we're going to see, it wasn't. But she's confirming it now, like th this stuff is real. And like, how can you, how can you, how can you like? I don't know how you can like him. What is there to like? The only thing that there is to like is that there's a potential of the reunion if he's, I don't know, like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. He acts like a fan and it's like he's the, uh, the washed up former, like, uh, homecoming king who keeps going back to his high school. It's so cringe. He truly is that person. Also, I just want to show a little clip of this other woman who has a story about Liam Payne, which, by the way, this story is from like many people have this story with Liam. And it's just to corroborate what Maya Henry was talking about with him, you know, preying on One Direction fans because they'll never turn on him. So this is one story, just know there are many. Okay, so I was a One Direction fan. Liam was my favorite. He knew that. He, he messaged me on Instagram. And at first I was like, oh my God, he's messaging me on Instagram. Like, this is so cool. Like, what? how is this happening and then it turned into him asking me for explicit videos explicit photos and i would send them because i was like it's liam payne i'm gonna send them like this was me being delusional at age 24 25. yeah so you know going out of your way to message fan accounts like people who are like explicitly publicly fans of you and then be like hey 
Show me them boobs. Hey, I'm Liam Payne. How about you take your shirt off, wiggle your boobs around, and twerk butt naked in front of me? I'm Liam Payne. That's... It... Disgusting. There's nothing else for it. It's disgusting. By the way, she said she was 24, 25 at the time. There are so many stories that are like the exact same as this where he's asking for pictures and videos where he doesn't ask what their age are. The ones that I've seen, they've all been like, well, I was 18 or I was 19, but he didn't ask. And it just makes me wonder how many there are that he didn't ask and they... I listen. I, whoa, hey. Just saying. I'm just. Hey, I'm just saying. The guy is a freaky creep. Now, before we go back to the video that I've already made, <laughs> like this is the modern day update. This has been going on for so long. Okay, before we get into the rest of the stuff, which is really just gonna showcase how washed up and embarrassing and humiliating. Like he's just so. He's just so. Just. just ugh. Before that, just if you're a One Direction fan, keep this in mind. Also, I find it so interesting. Somebody had commented on Maya Henry's post saying, "Why do him and Niall not talk?" I heard Niall does not like him. She replied. Girl, don't even get me started. He talks so much shit about all the boys, but then is popping up at their concerts. That's who we're dealing with here. That's who we're dealing with. And I think it's important to remember that, like, he's not somebody who you should be feeling a lot of aww for at all for what we're about to get into. He's just embarrassing. That's it. And also horrible. Okay, but let's go. Which brings me to the next piece of the iceberg, the infamous Logan Paul podcast. Because I think in this video, we're gonna just be going down and down the iceberg. You know, like one of these type things, we're getting yeah above the iceberg and then we're gonna get down. But yeah, Liam Payne went on Impulsive to talk with Logan Paul. And to say it didn't go well would be an understatement. Here's just a few moments from the podcast. From what I've heard is that like, part of the reason One Direction was made was because of Simon's promise to me that in two years, I'll make this work for you. Wow. So he kind of started with my face and then worked around the, the, the rest. I've never told us. Oh my God. That's just one of the things he said in here. There's so many things that he said in here. By the way, in the year 2022, like peak Harry Styles, post like Zayn be peaking and then having chill life, being Liam Payne going on the Logan Paul podcast saying, yeah, you know, uh, what I've been told is that they started with me and then they built the rest around. It was Simon Cowell's promise to, in two years, we'll make something work for you, Liam. We're gonna start with you and we'll build people around you. Knowing what reality is, is such a crazy thing to say. With like the cockiness, because you can say that with humility, but I detected no humility from Liam in nearly anything that I've seen of him. Damn, 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 damn. I'm sorry, I, listen, I don't know, there's a lot. I think that genuinely he's probably, nah, I don't want to say it, it does feel like he's probably a big reason that there hasn't been like a One Direction reunion single or album yet. It's almost like he feels like he's clout chasing off of people who probably want to just view each other as friends. Oh, that's what it feels like though. Oh, fuck. That's just how I feel. And I think that that's how a lot of people feel about him. So for that to be the reality and to still be talking about it as if like, yeah, it was the main one actually. Yeah, I was actually supposed to be in the video. Really? Then he tried to big dog Logan Paul and act like, I'm a big tough strong guy. It's so tough. I'm sorry. I think it was well known within the band that I don't like taking shit right, right. at a certain point. I made it very obvious. I'm not going to tell you how. <laughs> um, and there was one moment where... Yeah, 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 you see right there, he goes, and I'm not going to tell you how. Oh, uh, well, let me tell you how. <laughs> That's what he does, because he's about to tell us how he made it obvious that I don't deal with that. Hey, taking shit... I actually don't deal with that. Harry Styles, Zayn Malik, Louis Tomlinson, Niall Horn. I don't deal with their shit. Knowing what we know about them and like the people that they are and knowing about the type of person that Liam is and who he is, what is he talking about there? I won't be taking shit. They're a little bit rowdy. Listen, he was Harry Styles at the peak of One Direction. He's gonna clown around and maybe touch a mushroom. And you know what? I don't know the stories. I don't know the inner workings. And I'll show you uh, Louis Tomlinson's reaction to this clip, which was very empathetic in a second. But like, here's how he tells the story of how he I, I made it obvious. I won't tell you how. Uh, here's how. There was an argument backstage and someone, one ma member in particular, threw me up a wall. So I said to him, if you don't remove those hands, there's a high likelihood you'll never use them again. That is such a British thing to <laughs> say. Even Logan Paul and Mike, you can see their faces are just like, that's kind of fucking cringe right now. Oh, that's such a British thing to say. And by British, I mean cringe. One time there was an argument backstage. Somebody ended up throwing me against the wall. And I said, if you do it again, you won't use those hands again. We know who your bandmates were. We are currently envisioning Harry Styles throwing you up against the wall. Not like that. And Larry's, don't say that's what Harry and Louie were doing. They don't like that. By the way, Larry's are people who believe that Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson had a frothing, just passionate romance in One Direction. But let's all just back off. They clearly don't like talking about it. Hey, that could be true, but we can, you can keep it to your, we can, but the idea of Harry Styles or Louis Tomlinson or Niall Horan or even Zayn, who was always portrayed as the bad boy, even though that feels a little bit linked to his 
he's... Uh, I mean, I think people have said that before. It's like, he wasn't really ever the bad boy. He just wasn't white. I don't know. Is that crazy for me to say? But any of them throwing up Liam to the wall and Liam saying, at that time, you think this guy's throwing Liam Payne up against the wall and deserving to have his wrist broken? But like, come on now. This crew being this man right here saying, if you don't remove those hands from me, there's a high likelihood you'll have to have a use of them again. Him? And it's one of these guys' wrists. And we know how he acts now. I gotta say, whoever threw him up against the wall might have been justified. I don't know. And we don't know the inner workings. By the way, modern day Cooper, Maya Henry, thank you for posting this because a little bit extra context. We now know who who the boy was that pushed Liam against the wall. Okay, I see this all the time everywhere. Um, I've heard this in several stories so many times and he told me it was Zane, so. It was Zane, it was Zane. Thank you, Zane. Zane, Zane, Zane. Just had, just had to drop that in there, modern day update. Okay, back to the rest. Cause this interview clearly like obviously blew up really big because of what he's saying and how he's talking about it and how cringe and how embarrassing it is. Like it's really cringe and embarrassing and it blew up. So people were talking about it and then Louie went on the Zach Sang show and he said a whole thing about it. All I'd say on that was, I think, which of those annoying poor brothers was it? Logan. Right. I, I, they, he, he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing, the sure. buttons he was pressing. Yeah, that's like a very empathetic and very adult take on saying this. And I will say, if you can let Logan Paul goad you into saying this stuff about your friends, you might be a dimwit. <laughs> If Logan Paul can manipulate something out of you and you're a former member of One Direction and you have PR training, I think to not be able to navigate that without coming across looking like a jackass, I think it doesn't take a dimwit to know how to like do that. Which then brings me to, and this is where we're going deeper into the lore. I went to Liam Payne's his YouTube channel and he talked about the impulsive thing in a very different way than Louie was also with just one chunk of new braided hair and a hairstyle I've never seen before and also a year and a half after the interview came across really big-headed didn't it wow it was hard for me to watch back I think in those moments when you make these videos you don't realize the impact that your words might have on other people so he says that and I wanted to be fair and I wanted to give that even though he gave it a year and a half later and nobody really watched this video or seemed to care I want to give it his due he said with the most sith looking hair Cut I've ever seen. Yeah, it came across really big headed. He did then a year later, this year, post up at Niall Horn's show posting about it on a Snapchat story, going with fans going like I don't know if the lesson was fully learned, but he acknowledged it. And I'm sure we'll get an update video about this whole Niall Horan situation from Liam in a year and a half. But in watching that video, I realized Liam Payne just uploads videos of him sitting down talking to the camera to his YouTube channel. I have to explore this. I'm making a YouTube video about it. I gotta do a little research. And oh boy, did I find something. This video, Liam Payne, I'm back, where I've been, Seaspiracy and NFTs. Oh no! Next uploaded video, Liam Payne. My NFT, haircuts, and four years of strip that down. And then finally this one, how to buy an NFT. Liam Payne x Nifty giveaway. There is nothing more embarrassing than being a, like, objectively the most- Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to say that he's the most washed up member, former, like, One Direction band. I don't want to say that, because that, like, that seems rude. But what I can say is he's the one who most acts like one. Doing NFTs as Liam Payne, and let's watch the videos talking about them like this. It seems weird because you could screenshot it, you could take a photo, but you'll never have the original file of the piece of what it is and that's how this works i mean we live in such a technological age <laughs> so what are you doing liam he even sounded confused when he was describing it it's like an image but you know it's you could like you i mean you could screenshot it but it's the file so yeah i mean we're in a technological age and by the way if you don't understand it that means you understand it because it's not anything like no do you want to pay two hundred thousand dollars for something i made in blender and and also the official rights to it no actually if i was gonna do that i'd spend it on like art in real life. You fucking idiot. If I want to spend $800,000, I'd get something that's real. If I have that much money, why am I buying a screenshotable? Like fucking, like it's so fucking stupid. And hearing him talk about it. And then later in the video, just soft pitching. It's clearly paid promotion. Now that we know you're doing a nifty giveaway with an official like NFT thing later, but listen to the way he talks about it early on as if it's not an ad. Go and head over to, um, to Nifty Gallery is the one that I, have been looking at the most, but there's some uh, some good stuff on there. So I'm hoping, yeah, there's there's something in that art book that I'm hoping to bring to the table very soon. But at the right time, we'll see we'll see how it all goes. Okay, I mean, okay, that's where I go. Uh, nifty, yeah, it's where I go. 
I, 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 I'm a big NFT connoisseur myself, Liam Payne. And me personally, I got an NFT. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'll do something with them someday. Next video. You'll never believe who he brings up. Warning, what you're about to see if you are in a certain part of the internet is going to explode your mind. Now, a lot of us spend a lot of our time on, on TikTok and, and ticking and talking. And, and one person who's really come through with that with some of the amazing things that he said for me was Gary V. Uh, and we're actually working on something together at the moment. <laughs> Which is really cool. He's a very, very cool guy. Don't look me in the eyes, Liam Payne, and say that you are currently working with Gary V. Don't. Listen, I don't want to say Liam Payne is the most washed up former One Direction band member. I don't want to say that. But he is only and exclusively acting like the most washed up member of the former One Direction. I've been watching a lot of Gary V on TikTok and you know, I think he's really cool. I think we all know a man who watches Gary V a little too much and thinks he's a little too cool. And knowing that that is who Liam Payne is, like that man in your life who's a little bit too into Gary V, who by the way is definitely the connect between Logan Paul and him, like definitely set up that connect. Which just means you're traveling in the circle of Gary V, Logan Paul, you're making NFTs that you talk about, by the way, like this. This is by the wonderful Zed and Silly Game. It looks like there's a Egyptian Egyptian ceremony going on there with a big, big ball. <laughs> That's how you're talking about NFTs. Ugh. After watching the most just 3D made in Blender on smooth animations. R slash smooth animations. Top comment. Thanks for the gold, kind of stranger. That's what that image gives. By the way, very beautiful animation, and it deserves 10K upvotes on Reddit. Not $10,000 in real life. Would rather pay for a, like a fucking big ass painting from an art student. Imagine an art student, you giving 10K to them? You know what kind of fucking incredible Im oh, immaculate art that you could have in your house that everybody in your house, like that would enter would be like, oh my God, what a striking, beautiful piece. Or you could be the guy when people come over who says, dude, look at this, look at this on my phone. It's these four like fucking Egyptian things, but like cyberpunk. And as Liam Payne once described it, big ball. Big ball. That being who you are, it's so so washed up former One Direction band member. It's so, so, so that. Fuck. And the thing is, Strip That Down for me is a banger. It's one of my favorite rap songs. <laughs> oh man, man. I can't believe that he called Strip That Down for me hip hop. Can we, like we brushed over that too quickly. Go on and strip that down for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't get it. It's kind of like Rack City, bitch. Like I'm kind of basically Tyga. That's why I don't like Harry Styles' new music is because I'm like Tyga. And he's like, you know, a different era of music, which is what he said. Oh, but that's not the only thing. Okay, fuck, okay. I'll say that I'll get to more Liam Harry stuff in a second. But yes, he did then release a suddenly filmed in 4K just add one minute and 40 second long video of him saying wow nfts huh how do i buy it and then him going here's how you buy it hey by the way how to purchase how to purchase here let me tell you how to purchase now by the way i have one in the description below i have one click it gotta verify your email and phone number one thing you've gotta do is email your verified phone number meanwhile i'm sorry harry styles is currently penning you're so golden la, la, la. like high off of shrooms just loving life, getting with a older woman who he just is enraptured with, spitting on Chris Pine. Just kidding, I know he didn't do it, I know he didn't do it. I wish he had though. God, I'm one of those people who I just wish he had, that would've been so funny. It's like a movie. That's what Harry Styles was while Liam was uploading. How to buy an NFT, click the link in my description. Gary Vee said that the most important thing is making sure that my audience who probably might not know how to like get an NFT has to know. So I gotta upload a 4K video. And it got, how many views? 112,000. <sighs> That's the thing, I'm not pulling more views than if Harry Styles uploaded. But I'm getting like current 2024 Cooper, at least four times as me. Listen, listen, at least four times as me. After three years, brother, it's just not giving class. <laughs> the class that Zane, Louis, Niall, and Harry all have. By the way, Harry had a show, Niall showed up to it also. And look at him, he's sitting there literally like in with the fans while Golden is playing. There's Harry. What makes you beautiful is playing. He's standing up, he's smiling. He's taking in the moment. He is literally at the Wembley in with the fans and he's making less of a deal of it than Liam Payne from the VIP booth. <laughs> That's why Niall has class. Niall has 
dignity. And here's the thing. All of the boys watching this video would be like, hey, there's a lot to love about Liam. I know. I have friends who are into Gary V. Fundamentally, you know, different types of people, but I can understand there's beauty in everybody. There's life. There's joy. People go through things. But I'm just saying, watching this, I couldn't be more embarrassed. And this brings us to the darker side of things. We'll ease into it with a... Uh, well, we'll ease into it with this this Harry Styles article. Oh man, this is from 2015. God, what a throwback. The title, by the way, so indicative of who these two men are and how their careers will go. Harry Styles responds to Liam Payne's rainbow flag criticism in best possible way. If that's not the most Liam Payne, Harry Styles headline I've ever seen, the article starts with saying, after opening up about his stance on homophobia and gay rights, Liam caused controversy when he said that the U.S. fans who had taken the gay pride rainbow flag to One Direction shows over the summer were only doing it for their, in his words, strange and sad belief that Louis Tomlinson and Harry Styles were in a secret relationship with one another. This is embarrassing on two fronts. On the one hand, looking back at this from 2024 perspective, he is looking at the, the headlines that Louis and Harry are getting with like, Why is it about them? These fucking rainbow flags. It's all because of them, which is, means it's, it's all because of me. It should be more about me. We shouldn't have these rainbow pride flags because it's just about Louis and Harry. It's strange and sad. And here's the thing. You could interpret it as, oh man, I feel bad that Louis and Harry are like facing this intense scrutiny. It's like really causing a stress on their relationship and the band as a whole. Knowing how things go now and what else I'm about to read, he's just like clearly being like, but the, the gay pride flag, they're not doing it because they're gay. It's just because of Louis and Harry. But then in their first appearance since uh, Liam Payne's interview went live, Harry Styles went on stage and it says grabbing a rainbow flag and running around with it on stage for the fifth concert in a row. Liam says, they're only doing gay pride flags because of Louis and Harry. Everybody says they're gay, right? So that was this pride thing. It's all about how they're gay with each other, right? And Harry's like, shut the fuck. Up. It's the pride flag. Woo! And then he just kept doing it. He, he like Harry Styles is so like obviously responding to be like, bro, it's not about that. They're just gay and happy. They have gay pride. It's 2015. People have gay, like gay pride. People are bringing rainbow flags to the show. Why are you being weird about it? So glad that he went out and did that because yeah, that puts everybody else in the band in such an uncomfortable position. Because <sighs> later in the Impulsive podcast, Liam Payne was talking about Zayn Malik in a very interesting way. Logan brought it up because he was talking about how Jake Paul had a really negative experience with Zayn. It was like a big confrontation in Vegas. And this is how Liam Payne navigates that conversation. Remember, Louis was like, the Paul brothers knew exactly what they were doing. And sure, Logan Paul, but he's also just talking about how it's his brother's experience. But he's clearly trying to get him to talk a little bit about Zane. But you didn't have to talk about him like this, Liam. Let's just let it play. Our boy Zane. Ugh. X band mate, I Wayne, should say. Wayne Malik. I thought my brother was about to fight Zane, and then Gigi tweeted at Jay calling yeah. him like ugly and irrelevant. Yeah, calling him Wayne Malik. And let's just look at the tweets real quick. God, this is such a throwback. Jake Paul said, almost had to clap up Zane from One Direction because he's a little guy and has an attitude and basically told me to fuck off for no reason when I was being nice to him. Zane, if you're reading this, stop being angry because you come home alone to your big ass hotel room. Ah, he's Jake Paul, you know, he's just, he's just being a dick. But then they get the Gigi Hadid reply. Insane pop culture moment. Gigi Hadid tweeting at, Lo at Jake Paul is crazy. She says, lol, because he doesn't care to hang with you and your embarrassing crew of YouTube groupies. Home alone with his best friends like a respectful king because he has me, sweetie. Unbothered by your irrelevant ugly ass. Go to bed. Gigi Hadid. She just fucking, she just ate the fuck out of Jake Paul on that. She ate the, she ate, uh, wait, but it's so interesting for Liam to be looking at this while Gigi is saying, that the Paul brothers, those are embarrassing YouTube groupies. While Liam Payne is with the embarrassing YouTube groupies that he got connected with by Gary V. By the way, Gary V, famous author of the incredible quote in this clip, talking to a woman who came up in a Q&A and said, uh, the most important thing to me is my family. He said, <laughs> and like literally once a day, genuinely sit there for five minutes and make pretend one of them got shot in the face. And you're Liam Payne and you're hanging out with that and then your ex-bandmate Zayn Malik, his girlfriend Gigi Hadid, she's tweeting out that these are an embarrassing group of people to be hanging out with. And Zayn is so much bigger than that and so much beyond that. And Liam Payne's just sitting. Like, I don't think Logan Paul really was putting together how insulting it is to bring this up, but let's see how Liam reacts. She tweeted something about get yourself like a respectful man or something. Yeah, yeah. That one didn't age very well. It didn't age... <laughs> 
Because <laughs> remember, a year after the Jake Paul incident happened with Zayn, a year after that, but a year before the Impulsive podcast, this headline was, you know, everywhere. This story was there. Zayn Malik pleaded no contest to harassing Gigi and Yolanda Hadid. Do you remember that? So he's bringing that up in response and to defend Jake Paul and I guess by extension himself. And to be fair, by the way, Zayn denied that accusation, pleaded no contest to the harassment charges. Oh boy. The thing is, Liam Payne has an ex-girlfriend and there is an interesting book that she wrote and article interview that accompany it. So we're getting deeper and deeper on the iceberg. Okay, now, remember when we were talking about the book earlier, Modern Day? Now we're gonna get into the specifics of the book. And again, I just wanna give like a reminder. I'm gonna say, oh, she's trying to protect herself a little bit legally. Well, she has come out and said that it was 100% about him. So there is no room for delusion of, well, maybe it is fiction. We know it, tell them, Coop. In People Magazine, talking about the author, Maya Henry, Liam Payne's ex, she says that her new novel, uh, Looking Forward, she, uh, it's a project she said was inspired by personal journals written during the pandemic, when she was in the midst of a relationship with former One Direction singer Liam Payne. So she was inspired by her personal journals that she was writing during her relationship with Liam Payne. But then the description of what the book is that was inspired by her personal journals and the relationship Liam Payne. Those who have expected a romantic page turner that reflected the couple's seemingly picture perfect life together, a content warning that alerted readers to sensitive material like abortion, abuse, violence, self-harm, substance abuse, and eating disorders told a different story. And this book was was inspired by personal journals that she wrote about her relationship with Liam Payne, or just her personal journals that she wrote while in the midst of the relationship. She's using a lot of language in this interview, you'll notice, to protect herself legally. Like, all I can say is that he couldn't sue her for what she said, but am I thinking that maybe she was picking her words carefully so that that would be true. I don't think that that's a stretch to believe. She says, obviously the book is fiction, Henry tells people, but it's definitely inspired by true events, dot, dot, dot. Remember, true events that were written about during yeah. The main character, Mallory, is very similar to me, and that's why it was very easy for me to write her character and put the emotion in there. I'm just grateful that I have this opportunity and platform to really help be a voice for women. The article goes on to say, this is important to read, one in three women have experienced some form of physical violence by a partner, and though Henry, 23, does not accuse the musician of abusing her, it's a topic she explores in Looking Forward via her main character, Mallory, an aspiring young model smitten by a sweet-talking British pop star. The book... <laughs> Oh my god, chronicles Mallory's whirlwind romance with the charming Oliver and her devastation with her unraveling fairy tale as he grows frustrated with his stalled career. Written during 2020, when Harry Styles is who he is, Zayn Malik is who he is, Liam and Louie are who they are, and Liam is who he is. And at that time, she is writing personal journals about a character who is that exact person. And it's inspired by her personal life. And that's what the book is about. And then the book ends up being about Oliver, the name of the main uh, British pop star in the book, who like Payne rose to fame as a member of a boy band formed on a television show, turns increasingly to substances, culminating in a terrifying climax of Oliver punching a hole in a wall in a rage. Henry's book also features an emotional sequence in which Oliver gives Mallory an ultimatum, get an abortion or lose me. <laughs> Frustrated, emotional, toxically masculine, prone to violence, substance abusing, which culminates in a climax, punching a hole in the wall of a man who is a member of a former boy band and is British, and the boy band was created on a TV show, and it was written inspired by her personal journals that she wrote during her time with her relationship with him. We can read between the lines and see, oh my God. She says, I drew inspiration for my real life, and I wanted to include a scene like that in the book because while not everyone dates a pop star, I feel like everyone dates someone like Oliver. <laughs> it then says, people was unsuccessful and reaching pain for a comment. <laughs> huh, I wonder why. The article goes on to say, though the author says now that she didn't think much of the pair's eight year age gap while they were together, she acknowledges that her inexperience when it came to relationships complicated things. So just to be clear, she's 23 now. They were in a relationship in 2020, so she was 19. So he's a 27 year old man with a 19 year old girl, woman, and seemingly, if I'm connecting dots ri written in a book, that man potentially would be saying, get an abortion or lose me and punching holes in the wall and screaming. That's who's talking about the Zayn stuff. That's who's saying, oh. <laughs> and then also, Keep in mind, that book is like relevant right now. Like it just released and when it released, the day that it released, Liam Payne, I'm assuming in an effort to get all of the Liam Payne tweets to be about this. He showed up at motherfucking Louis Tomlinson's documentary premiere the day that his girlfriend is, or ex-girlfriend released that book. So like, 
I mean, how much sympathy am I supposed to give this guy because Louis Tomlinson told me to have empathy for him? Either way, okay, in the middle of all of this blowing up, like Maya Henry's story coming out, ex-girlfriend stuff blowing up, Louis tweeted this right here. Hope everyone is doing all right. Then he replied to a Niall Horan tweet because Niall tweeted the same day. And Louis said, keep smashing it, lad. Big love. So that clip of Louis on the Zack Sang show going like, the Paul brothers knew exactly what they were doing. You know, he's going through a lot. I think with the context of everything that's going on now, Louis is doing a little bit of a, hey, hey, he actually is getting exposed for who he is. Hey. Uh, you can't see, but down there I'm tap dancing. So keep that in mind. Uh, we don't really need to like defend Liam for Louis. Okay, 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 got it. Keep going. Listen, she was talking about uh, how he is like abuses substances and stuff. And here's the thing, genuinely, like people who are addicts, like I, we can extend empathy to them. For real, we can. But he also frequently talks about like when he's sober and when he's sober, it's not like a different public personality. So these things that are happening privately behind the scenes are horrible. Do we just give that the excuse because it's like, well, he's an addict? Like a lot of people are addicts. And I think that part of, you know, what sucks about it is that sometimes you make really, really bad decisions that are like harmful in multiple ways to the people around you. And when that's kind of your wake, and then when a book about it's coming out and you're just like, hey, friends, hey, friends. It's like Ice Spice. Anytime someone's like, uh, Ice Spice is actually a really shitty human being to me on a human level. Ice Spice is like, hey, one of my friends, come to me, come on, come with me to a Knicks game. Come on, come on over and get some pictures with me. And Louis is doing that with his best mogging face the whole time. Louis, by the way, said, Tomlinson didn't expect him to actually show up. It means the world, he said on the red carpet. I didn't actually expect him to come, but he told me a couple days ago he was coming. So really, just an honor and testament to him as a guy, definitely. Louis is a very, very good man. Louis is a genuinely good friend and a very supportive man. And I think that he has handled himself post One Direction with the utmost grace and humility. And it really sucks that Liam seems to be doing this. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just, you know, I don't know. It seems like a big coincidence that it's happening the same day. And then he makes a really big post on Instagram where he said about Louis, seeing the world through your eyes last night was the most beautiful thing to experience. He wrote, my neck hurts from how much I'm looking up to you right now. You were already my friend and brother, but getting to look through that window into your world and mine, it just extends that I have that respect that I have for you, what you've dealt with and how you've held it all inside. I'm so sorry I was out of my mind. I didn't do better for you. I feel ashamed in those moments to not be as good a friend as you would have been to me. At least I have time now and I'm me again, so I will try and make amends. This is why it's Liam Payne. You know what I mean? P-A-I and Payne. On the one hand, you feel bad for him. You really do feel bad for him. Him and like your heart go out to him red yes blue no did your heart go out to me red yes blue no that's liam Payne. like having a snapchat story where you're just like is difficult and it's painful and it seems like he has moments of genuine clarity and he's like fuck, fuck, fuck. but then also in those moments he's going off and selling nfts with gary v and logan paul and commenting on zane and gigi's relationship meanwhile he has very similar like in his like and then modern day even after all of this stuff of like well he said this he said this he said this going to niall's show leaning over like <laughs> whoa <laughs> like, it's so difficult to watch this and i wanted to save this angle for the end of the video because oh my god look at how he's like very clearly playing into wanting everybody to look at him like leaning over like that in his mind he is so cool in his in his mind this is like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god it's too cringe it's too cringe i'm sorry it's too cringe it's too cringe it's too cringe and then he's going back like with his friends being like hey if i was with somebody if i was hanging out with somebody oh my god me backstage with one of the jonas brothers while joe jonas is having a solo show and that brother is doing this if i was backstage with one of them i would throw up out of second hand because then you have to spend the rest of the night with a guy who's him. Who takes selfies next to genuinely the most pure-hearted looking Irish gentleman. Just smiling. Hey, hey, hey. Take a picture like this. I've got to talk things out. <laughs> it's nothing serious. I've just got to talk to the boy. He talked like that to his Snapchat camera and I'm not exaggerating. We all saw it. We were all there. It's pain. And I can't tell you enough. There is so much internet back. I want to say, I don't want to say backlash. There's internet embarrassment over Liam Payne every time his name is in any headline. I saw this tweet from an account while I was doing research and I think it is so true of like the dichotomy. Oh fuck. It's a dichotomy moment. Hey, the dichotomy of 
fuck it, I, I got embarrassed and I fucked it up. But the tweet said, it should have been a nary selfie, Niall and Harry, but Harry would never post Niall on his Snapchat story for some money and attention. So, dot, dot, dot. I mean, the very fact that you're like, hey, can I get a photo op? Hey, hey, photo op for my Snapchat, Niall. Hey, Niall, can I get a Photoshop? By the way, Marquez, what do you think about this wallpaper? I found this wallpaper online. It was just an image that I pop popped up on my feed and I was like, this is beautiful. I, I just downloaded it and it's my wallpaper. I'm sorry that I didn't go through you first. I'm sorry, I love Marquez. I just posted the video, that's why it's on my mind right now. It's the last video I posted. Fuck, I'm so nervous. Actually, let me check. Okay, people know I still love Marquez. Okay, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's it's truly not Liam Payne. It's Liam Payne. And hey, if you're still watching, you have to subscribe. And by the way, we've made it this far. I'll say it. The ones who know me from my TikTok days. Harry Styles. Cause the thing is, if I'm Liam Payne, I'm approaching my life like Louie or like Niall. Okay, if I'm not Zayn level success, if I'm not Harry level success, I'm going to have my dignity and I'm gonna make good music and I'm just gonna enjoy life, spread love, positivity, be mature. I'm not gonna go hang out with Gary Vee, Logan Paul and sell NFTs and then be like posting up for photo ops with who's supposed to be my friend. Like, they're supposed to be friends. 